Canonical may have abandoned the Unity desktop, but that does not mean it is over entirely, because you can style the GNOME desktop to look like Unity. However, I will point out that the best look and feel of Unity can be found within KDE, with perhaps the second place going to the Cinnamon desktop with Linux Mint. Although the easiest Unity look and feel can be obtained with Ubuntu Mate, you can use the style switcher and select Unity style from the list. You can also style the XFCE desktop with Zubuntu, and the LXDE desktop with the distribution LXLE. Anyway, back to the GNOME desktop. So some of the components are already here. So we have a Unity-like launcher here, you know, close enough, and a Unity Dash. Although the GNOME searcher is not quite as good as the Unity Dash. It doesn't really pick up documents as quick as Unity does. There's a number of extensions that we will need, and also a couple of programs to install. So that's the list of extensions, and these are all in the video description. The program to install is this Plotinus, which will give you a heads up display. And I've also found a global menu, which you can use in the GNOME desktop. Although I didn't find it to be particularly good, so I'll just leave you the link, and it's up to you whether you want to use it. You'd start with opening up the tweak tool, go across to extensions, and then get more extensions. But as I mentioned, you can use the link in the video description. Dash to dock, so that will be the Unity launcher. Hide activities button, just gets rid of the activities button in the top left hand side. We don't really want that on the Unity desktop. Better volume indicator allows you to use the scroll wheel to adjust the volume. No top left hot corner, it's just an easy way of getting rid of the hot corners in the GNOME desktop. Although I have found that rather useful on the KDE desktop, so up to you if you want to remove it. The flippery move clock, so move the clock from the center to the right hand side. And finally, impatience, speed up the GNOME shell animation speed. You can already see the desktop has changed, so we now have the launcher there, no activities button, and for the volume control, yes, I can use the scroll wheel to adjust it. Perfect, so let's start with the dash to dock settings. So I'm going to right click on the activities launcher and select the dash to dock settings. So I show the dock on primary monitor, position on the screen left hand side. I'm going to turn the auto hide off because that would replicate the behavior of the Unity launcher. Reduce the icon size slightly. No need to change anything on the launcher menu. Behavior. So click action. The behavior I'm after is raise window. And the scroll action cycle through windows. Under appearance, so use built-in theme, yeah, turn that off, shrink the dash, on, show window counter indicators, yeah I quite like that, let me just demonstrate that. If you have two instances of Firefox, you can see two dots, and that's the scroll effect in action. Customize dash color, now it's entirely your choice here, I want something very dark, Entirely black, yes, that'll do. Customize opacity, yes. Two thirds, yeah, that'll be okay. So I'm missing something, aren't I? Uh, position and size. Panel mode extend to screen edge, that's what I meant to click. And the last option here is to move the applications button to the beginning of the dock. Perfect, that looks very like the Unity launcher. Now there's a number of commands I need to run in the terminal. But first, let's sort out the profile here and get to that more Ubuntu styled. Untick use colors from system theme. Now I change the background color. And the text color is white. The close. So the button layout. So you can use the G settings command. Again, that is in the video description. Some theming packages to install. That is sudo apt install Ubuntu wallpapers, Ubuntu mono, and DMZ cursor theme. Now, due to an issue with my microphone, I've already done this part, I've just had to go back and re record it. Now, to add a repository for the Noobs Lab themes, again, I've already done this bit, so I'm going to cancel this. So then you would do sudo apt update. Okay. Then the sudo apt install arc theme. There's another theme that I would like, is the Ambience GNOME. Although it does glitch a little bit now because it's been made for an older version of the GNOME desktop. But we'll put it on and see what it looks like. So I need to download it. Files. So file, yep, save. 
go across the downloads folder. Come hurry up. Downloads. Ambience GNOME. Yep, open that. Actually, there's another way of extracting, isn't there? Let's use these new features that have just appeared in Nautilus. So extract here. Close. I'm moving the extracted folder across to the slash USR slash share slash themes folder. Now to go back to the tweak tool. Now I should be able to pick these new themes up from the list. So yeah, arc darker, quite like that one. The icons, uh, I think it's humanity dark. Yep, that's what we had in Ubuntu. The cursor, DMZ white. And the show theme did not like it, did it? So why has it gone mad? Okay, after rebooting the system, the shell themes have appeared. So that's the Ambient Gnome theme. Pretty close, pretty close. Now we'll run for the install of Plotinus. So just scroll down a bit further here, and we've got a few instructions. So open up the terminal again. So that's sudo apt install git cmake valac and libgtk3 dev. So yes, okay. And now I'm going across to the opt folder, so cd slash opt. Now in order to work in this folder, I'll need to elevate my privileges. So sudo su. Now to continue on with the instructions on that page. So git clone the repository. And cd plotinus. mkdir build. cd build. cmake dot dot and make. Okay, that's done. Now I need to look for a specific file, libplotinus.so. Huh, it's right there. So now to enable Plotinus in applications, because of the complexity and clumsiness surrounding the Linux environment variables, Plotinus does not currently install automatically. The easiest way to enable Plotinus for all applications is to add the line gtk3 underscore modules equals and the absolute path of libplotinus.so. So as we worked out earlier, that is in the slash opt slash plotinus slash build folder and is called libplotinus.so. Using your favorite text editor, edit the slash etc slash environment file. So in my case, nano slash etc slash environment. So go across the end of that line and add a new line. Then create a line gtk3 underscore modules equals slash opt slash plotinus slash build slash libplotinus.so. Then control x, y, enter. And we're done. Now to reboot the system. So if you go across to something like files, then press control shift and p. That is plotinus. So let's go for about. So a, then enter. I've opened up the about box with the equivalent of a heads up display. Now, unfortunately, that does not work in all applications because Control Shift and P can be overridden by the application. So, for example, in Firefox, Control Shift and P opens up a new private window. Ah, oh, well, the best of intentions, but they did clash with a useful shortcut. Inkscape, this would have been a really useful point for Plotinus to work. Control Shift and P does not work. And it does not work for the Qt applications. For example, Kate, Control shift and p it does nothing. But it does work in GTK applications. So it is perhaps a bit limiting at this point. Okay, to finish up now, right-click on the desktop, change background. And I'm going to pick up the traditional Ubuntu wallpaper from the list. And the final thing would be change in font but I'm sure I don't need to talk you through this one. So I'll just show you the first one. Ubuntu, uh, want something slightly bolder for the window title. There you go. And that is how to get the GNOME desktop looking like the Unity desktop. Thanks for watching. I'll see you all later.